Good morning, Trinity San Diego family. We are so excited that you have joined us online today for our worship experience. Yes, yes, we hope that you've been enjoying church at home That's right. during this season. And we want you to know that as you enter into this time of worship and receiving a message from the Word of God, yeah. we want you to know that God is with you and He is for you and He wants to speak to you this morning. That's right, so like, comment, share, yeah. make sure you uh, stay connected during this time. We hope you enjoy this worship experience. Hey church, Pastor Todd here. I just have a couple quick announcements for you. Uh, if you would, would you take out your phone right now, your phone right here, and text Trinity San Diego, all one word, to 84576. Again, Trinity San Diego, all one word, to 84576. What you will do is that will give you an opportunity to get connected with us if you need prayer, if you wanna be on our email list to really stay connected. You can also follow us on social media. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. It's a great way where you can stay connected into everything that is happening here in the life of Trinity San Diego. Also, one other thing, we are in the midst of doing our parking lot services. Every Sunday for the foreseeable future at 10 a.m., right in our parking lot here at Trinity San Diego on Sunday mornings, we will be having a parking lot gathering. We will be social distancing where there will be an X on the parking spot that you can park in. We will have activities for the kiddos. We will have a great time of connection with being socially distant. And but what we will do is we will praise the name of our Lord Jesus. We will sing loud, we will shout, and we will have an encouraging, hope-filled word. So I encourage you, if you feel comfortable and you're able to, join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. right here at Trinity San Diego. God bless. 
Hey, good morning, church. We want to welcome you to uh, worship with us and continue on praising Jesus with us. Hey, I believe that God wants to do something amazing in your life right now. And uh, if you can, just lift up your hands right now and just act of surrender. And uh, we're just going to cry on to Jesus right now. We're just going to get our, our battle cry on. Worship is our warfare. No matter what we're going through or the battles that we face, that our first respond, we respond from a place of worship. Father, we pray, God, that let worship be our battle cry. Worship is our, our battle cry, Father. Our praise is our weapon, Jesus, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for your Son. We thank you for your Holy Spirit in this place, Jesus. Just an act of uh, surrender, if we can lift up our hands and just repeat these words after me. Say, Jesus. My home is yours. Say, Jesus, this place that I'm standing here right now, it's either a kitchen or a bedroom. Father, this right here is my altar. This right here is my sacrifice, God. We ask, Lord, that you may receive our worship, God. We love you, Father. We exalt you, Jesus. There's no one like you, God. We love you, Jesus. spoke away you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me You have been so, so kind to me. Come on, sing. Sing, oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love, God. And all it chases me, thou find still, I found leaves in 99. I could earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away, and all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Yeah. When I was your foes to your love far from me, yes you did, you have been so, so good to me, when I fell, when I fell nowhere, you paid it all for me. have been so, so kind to me. Come on, let's sing it. Sing all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And all it chases me down by I found these in 99. And I could earn it, and I don't deserve it. Self away and all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God.
everybody sing it out. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, there's no shadow you No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain. Coming after me. No, 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 no. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. And all the old. Chases me down. And I could earn it, and I don't deserve it. See you give yourself away, and I'll be overwhelming, never ending, reckless. And oh. And all the overwhelming reckless love of God. And oh, it chases me down, fights till I found me. Or oh, I could earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself. No, the overwhelming mm. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending love of God Oh, it chases me Oh, it chases me Oh, it chases me Oh, you're pursuing after me, Jesus. You are chasing me down, Father. Oh, you are so good, so good to me. Come on, right now in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever you are right now, come on. Just begin to lift up a praise right now in your bedroom. Come on, start singing, start shouting. Come on, let your neighbors hear your worship. Come on, cry out to Jesus. Come on. Oh, Father, we love you. We praise you, Jesus. Come on, sing your own song out to God this morning. Come give him praise. Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming up. There's no wall, there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming up. There's no shadow, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up.
many times that we feel forgotten and I feel there's someone listening to this live stream right now that you may feel like you have been forgotten that he has forsaken you or that he doesn't see you he doesn't hear your cry at night that he has turned his ear away from you my beloved I want to encourage you and affirm that he is your father that he has not forsaken you that he has not forgotten you. it's actually the opposite he is chasing you down he is like a father running after through the fields chasing after you with his arms open wide ready to embrace you and to hug you as many times we're placing situations that we uh, didn't foresee, that we didn't plan it out. As humans, our plans have plans, our backups have backups. And we plan everything out. And sometimes in life, it doesn't go according to the way we thought it would be. But I ask, can we today, as one body, as one voice, can we today just release that right now? Can we release that? Can we open our hands in the act of receiving right now and just give it away and receive what he has for us? Can we just trust in the name of Jesus? Can we trust him right now through it all? that he is pursuing us, that he loves us, that he loves you. We're gonna sing a song that talks about the nature and the goodness of our Father. And maybe we uh, on earth, some of us probably didn't have such a great earthly father. But no matter how our earthly father has treated us, that doesn't compare how our heavenly father loves us so much. We love you, Jesus. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're good, good. Come on, sing it out. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. Time. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. Come on, sing it out. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are, Jesus. Oh. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Oh, you 
are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To one more time, can we sing? You are, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I love I It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who you good. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I love I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I love I am. It's who I am. Jesus, oh, you are so good to us, Father. You are so good to us, Father. There's no one like you, Father. You're so good to me. You are so good, 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 so good to me. Sing it out. You are so good, so good to me. You are so good, so good to me. You are, you are so good, so good to me. You are so good, so good to me. You are, you are so good, so good to me. You are so good, so you are. You are so good, so good to me. You are so good, so good to me. You are, you are so good, so good to me. You are so good. You are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Changing, you are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are your good father. You're still voices. You are good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. Come on, sing it out. Let your voice cry out. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. 
Father, we rejoice in your presence, God. We rejoice in your presence, God, for we know that you are with us. We know that you have not forsaken us, God, that you are a good and just Father, Lord. And the plans that you have for us, God, come from a place of love, from, from, comes from a place, God, of watching out from us, God. Lord, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for what you're doing in this place, God. Lord, you are changing homes right now, God. Lord, I believe and I see for places and homes that haven't felt your presence for a time, God, right now now I believe that as people begin to worship in their homes begin to worship in their living room God that your presence starts to spread Jesus starts to spread all across their homes all across their neighborhoods right now father I pray God that our homes could be a light in our neighborhood that our households that our family God could be a house in our, uh, a light in our city Lord for we are called to make a difference God we are called to bear your light to bear your your presence father you have given us a spirit of boldness and not a spirit of fear Jesus Lord we grab on to what you have for us Lord we believe in your plans God we believe in you church the best is yet to come and God's on our side and if the Lord is for us then who could be against us we love you church amen Hey church, we're coming to a time of giving. I'm so excited. God loves a cheerful giver. But one thing that's kind of frustrating about giving is the whole idea of waiting. Last week, if you uh, tuned in, we talked about God does not use wasted seasons. He actually uses those for His glory. And the waiting season is not a wasted season. And so sometimes uh, when we give, we are in the realm of worrying and wondering and, and kind of not sure about the, when we're going to see the reward come down the line. But the thing is, is God loves a cheerful giver because a cheerful giver is faithful day in and day out, faithful. Every time that they have income come in, when you're faithful with the little that God gives you or maybe the much that God gives you, the more you sow into this house and the more you sow in faith, the more opportunity for God to move on your behalf. God's working on your behalf every single day. There's nothing He likes more than to meet your needs. But what we have to do is we have an obligation on our end to fulfill. And that obligation is actually not in a negative way. It's actually an opportunity for God to use us. And so for us today, on this day, on this Sunday, I encourage you, you can give many different ways but what you do is when you sow into this house you push the needle for where God wants us to go in the future we say the future is bright at Trinity San Diego it's because of faithful and faith-filled people every week that sow seeds of faith and what I've seen over the time of COVID is I've seen actually abundant blessings not only on this house but on each and every individual when they sow in faith so we have multiple different ways that you can give. You can text 77977 with Trinity San Diego, all one word. You can also write a check and you can send it into our physical location. Uh, you can also give at our live in-person gathering in our parking lot at 10 if, you're, uh, if you plan on coming to that. But also on top of it, um, we want to make sure that you are receded properly. So make sure that you're giving and what we believe is faithful givers are cheerful givers and God will bless you abundantly during this time. So let me pray for you. Father, thank you for my friends as they give. God, I pray right now that you bless them 10, 60, 100 fold. God, as they step out in faith, as they believe in faith, as they operate in faith, we pray that you move on their behalf. We love you today in your name. Amen. Thank you, church, as you give.
Good morning, everyone. I'm glad you could join us today at Trinity Church San Diego. I am excited about sharing this message with you. You know, we are living in some very interesting times. I might even call them hard times. I mean, think about it. There have never been times quite like this. I've talked to people that are in their 90s, and I've asked them, have you ever seen anything like what we're going through today right here in America and around the world? And they say, no, they've seen a lot of amazing things. You know, the American War College at the end of the Cold War did an amazing thing. They, they began to analyze what was happening in the world, and they came up with this phrase that's called V-U-C-A, VUCA, and it means volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And they said, this is what's going on in our world, this VUCA. It's volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. And certainly, one newspaper put it this way. It says, that's a way of just saying, hey, it's crazy out there. And I believe all of us would agree with that. You know, back in the 60s and 70s, I remember a very volatile time. Lots of ambiguity, lots of uncertainties going on. There were riots in cities and on campuses and, and bombings going off every day across America. It was an amazing time, but I don't remember it being like this. What we're facing today is just very interesting. We see where China is becoming more and more of a threat right now globally as they've developed into a superpower. We also realize terrorism is still you know, nipping at the heels of our lives uh, in a regular way. And uh, climate change, all of these things, there's just this amazing uncertainty. You know, when people start to go through these kinds of things, they're looking for answers. They're turning everywhere. One of the interesting things I read the other day is that something like 30% of Americans right now are very much into astrology. In other words, they're, they're trying to figure out what the future is. And whenever we go through these kind of times of uncertainty, people start looking for answers. Somebody said to me the other day, when I was talking to them, said, you know, it's like we're going through some kind of disaster movie. People can't really, really understand. But let me just say this. Let me tell you what the scriptures say about hard times. We've been doing this series of talks on what the scriptures say about, and I want to talk to you about what the scriptures say about hard times. Paul wrote to his young cohort, Timothy, and we read that in 2 Timothy chapter 3. In verse 1 he says, You can be certain that in the last days there will be some very hard times. Now the Apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost when he preached that sermon when so many people came to Christ, he said, you know, in the end times. Well, we're in the end times, but now we're in what I would call maybe even the last days. We don't know when the Lord's coming, but we are looking for His coming. But it says that one of the things that's going to happen in the last days is going to be very hard times. And of course it gives a lot of reasons for that. Probably the most startling reason it gives for that is that people are totally going to be into themselves. They're just going to be lawless and out of control. It's going to be incredible. But I want to tell you, in the middle of hard times, the Bible says this, and this is what Jesus said. He said, In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So I want to, be, I want to encourage you today. No matter what you're going through, just know this. That yes, hard times are here, but Jesus said, don't worry, I've overcome the world. You're going to have hard times. You see, the Bible gives us three ways, and probably many other ways, but I just want to give you three ways of how to deal with hard times. And they all come from one scripture. They all come from Psalm 46, and we're going to be referring back to that today. The first thing I want to encourage you to do is this. Recognize that God is your source of help. Ultimately, that's where everything comes from. But you need to recognize that. You need to remind yourself of that. You need to focus on that. Here's what the first verse in Psalm 46 says. God, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. <clears throat> yes, these are hard times. These are troubled times. But God is our refuge. You see, God is our source in every crisis. His peace, provision, it all comes from Him. It doesn't come from having a bank account. I'm not against having your bank account. 
It doesn't have come from having a safe deposit box, and I'm not against that. I, there's about 25 million safe deposits in America. You know what I discovered reading? I found out that often safe deposit boxes go missing. And when they go missing, the bank, according to the law, is not responsible for anything that was in that safe deposit box. I, met, <coughs> I read about one man. He lost $10 million. He went to a safe deposit. Somehow it was given to someone else. He lost it all. Isn't that amazing? And this is what he said. My impression about safe deposit boxes was that it was like putting your things in Fort, Fort Knox. He said, nothing could have been further from the truth. He said, so I don't, I don't trust that anymore. So we need to look to God as being our source. Listen to what Psalm 121 says. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? In other words, he's looking around. Where does my help come from? And then he says this. My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. Isn't that encouraging? In other words, God, in the middle of this crisis, where does our hope come from? Oh, that's right. Our help comes from the Lord, the one who made all the things that exist that we know about. Isn't it amazing? And so we need to do that. So first of all, recognize that God is your source. Number two, in that same passage, Psalm 46 don't be overly concerned about what you see happening. Don't, don't, don't freak out because I know it's easy. And I'll just be honest with you. I'm preaching to myself today. I mean, this last week, I, I kind of went through some things. You know, I was going, wow, Lord, it's just kind of depressing and kind of overwhelming what we're dealing with. And, of course, I'm reminded of this, Psalm 46. Here's, and before we read that next portion again, but... But let, let me just read you, let me point out this to you. Nearly one out of five people in America, that's about 18% of us, are going through anxiety disorders right now. Isn't that amazing? We're more anxious than people of other nations. Uh, in fact, we spend billions of dollars on medications to deal with anxiety. But we need to understand that God has a prescription for that crisis, and he doesn't want us to be overly concerned. So here's what it says in the next verse of Psalm 46. Therefore, therefore, in other words, because God is the maker of heaven and earth, because he's the one I look for, therefore I will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar, and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. You know, often the, the, the water's roaring. That's a picture through biblical history of people just being in an uproar. And man, today, I don't know about you, you all you need to do is turn on the news and you can see rioting and people upset and people attacking each other and yelling at each other. I mean, it's like people are just being stirred up like somebody stirred. It's like a, it's like a plague today of anxiety and it's causing people to be out of hand. You know, one researcher uh, did a study on this, on why we worry and how not to worry and why we shouldn't worry. And what he did, he took a lot of people, and for 20 days, just before they went to bed, they recorded all the things that they were worried about. And then at the end of 20 days, he had them look back and actually ask the question, how much of what you worried about actually happened? And only 91.4% of what their worries were ever came to pass. Well, you might say, well, that other 8 and 9%, that's what I worry about. <laughs> but, you know, see, God doesn't want us to worry. Why does he not want us to worry? Why doesn't God want you to worry? Why does he say that? No matter what happens, I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to worry. Because God promises to take care of his children. He promises to take care of us. Look what Jesus said in Luke. Luke chapter 12, verse 5. He said, but I will show you whom you should fear. Fear the one who, after you have been killed, has the authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. But then he goes on. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Think about that. 
<laughs> Every single hair on your head is numbered. And then he goes on and he says this, So do not be afraid, you are worth more than Mary, many sparrows. In other words, God's aware when sparrows die. God knows about the hairs on your head. head. God is watching. I watched the way my youngest daughter takes care of her daughter. I watched the way she's constantly watching over her. You know, she's a toddler, little Marley, and she's, she's always running, and sometimes she's falling down and banging her head and different things. But my daughter is constantly watching over her to make sure that she's going to be okay. You've got to realize something. God's watching over us. We're more important than sparrows. In fact, I was reading about what happened up in uh, um, uh, up near uh, Longview, Washington. There's a little bridge there. It's called the Nutty Narrows Bridge. And why is it there? It's the it's the tiniest bridge. It's for squirrels. Somebody watched as the squirrels there were running across the road to get some nuts and things on the other side, and they realized some of these squirrels were getting run over. So they built this bridge across the highway so the squirrels could run over to the other side. And, and you can actually go to a webcam and see it. And they built, I think, like six or seven of these bridges for squirrels. Now listen, if people care about squirrels and sparrows, and God does, don't you realize that he's going to take care of you? I love Psalm 27, 1. It says, The Lord is my life and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? Like I said, I, I, I've had those fears. I've had those worries. I mean, sometimes they come crushing into you. You kind of get anxious and you, you, you tend to, to be on edge. But that's why God wants us to come back to his word. Go to for, Psalm 40, 46 when you're going through times and, and read that. And go to other scriptures. So, first of all, recognize, number one, that God... Uh, is our source. And number two, don't be overly concerned about what you see happening around you. But finally, number three, be filled with the Holy Spirit's joy. Yes, that's it. Be filled with the Holy Spirit's joy. Did you know there's a happiness report that they actually record the level of happiness in different countries? And, and we're like, America's like number 19 on the list. We're way, way down the list. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other countries that are way ahead of us. And they really discovered that Americans are literally today exhausted by all the news and all the things that they're seeing going on around them. They're literally exhausted and their happiness is just being drained away. Well, happiness is temporary. Joy is a form of, of happiness, but much bigger than that. It, it comes from God. It's, it's the real source. So where does that come from? Well, that's also in Psalm 46. You see, it comes from God's river. Listen to this, Psalm 46, 4. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She shall not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in an uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. You see, this describes a time when literally the earth is being shaken. And certainly that's happening today. But in the middle of that, he said, there's a river. There's a river. And that river has streams. And those streams make glad the city of God. Well, who is the city of God? It's you and me, those that follow Christ, those that love God, those that are part of his family. And we can go to God for the joy that we need in the middle of this whole situation. So we recognize God's our source. And we, we, we don't get concerned about what's going on around us. But most of all, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. It's so important. You know, somebody wrote a book about it. It was called The Book of Joy. And they said this, Choosing Joy is a revolutionary act. I want to encourage you today, friends. Choose joy. As you're looking around, just start rejoicing. Paul's in prison, and he's rejoicing. He's, he's singing hymns when he's down in the bottom of the prison. He's rejoicing. He's choosing to do that. There's something about joyful praise 
and thanks that drives away despair, that breaks chains. And we've got to learn to choose joy. That's what Paul and Barnabas did when they were in uh, Pisidian Antioch. They'd gone into the city, they preached the gospel, and they, people were following Christ, but ultimately they were persecuted. And in Acts 13, we read about it. And, and, and the people were all you know, persecuting them, coming against them. But it says this, it says, So they shook the dust off their feet in protest against them and moved on to the next city. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. You see, that's the key to joy, is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we've got, we've got this great river of God. It's the river of the Holy Spirit. And in that river, all these streams of joy, the streams of peace, the streams of hope. But one of those great streams is joy. You know, friends, we can either worship or worry. And we've got to make that choice. You know, Jill Briscoe is a very famous uh, minister, speaker, travels around the world. And she was at a conference some years back uh, of many leaders in Luzon, Switzerland. And she heard one uh, Chinese gentleman that had been persecuted in communist China. And he told the story of what happened to him. He, because he was a Christian, he was thrown into prison. And he just would sing and, and, and sing praises to God, worship God in the middle of prison. And people were getting saved. Even his communist captors were getting saved. They, they were all shook up. You know what they did to him? They put him down and gave him a job where he had to literally wade into the, into the sewage and stir the That was his job, stirring up the, the sewage in that place. And sometimes it was like up to his neck. And he, that was his job. They, from early in the morning until... In the evening, he was in there stirring. Can you imagine that? But you know what? He said, no one bothered me there. I could sing as loud as I could because no one had wanted to come in there where I was. And so he would just, and so as he was singing and praising God and rejoicing in God, as he was doing all that, guess what? The people kept hearing him and more people got saved. And, and even, like I said, some of his captors got saved. And, and you know, sometimes... You may feel like you're living in this swirl of junk and garbage all around you. It's everywhere. And that's where we need to just get our focus off of what's around us and start lifting up, start lifting up praise and thanks to God in heaven. You know, I want to end with this thought. You know, the story we read in the Old Testament of how Solomon dedicated the temple of God. He dedicated that temple and when he did... The musicians were praising God and worshiping God and singing to Him. And as they did, the glory of the Lord came down and filled that temple. You know, I was walking around in our sanctuary to, this morning as we are preparing for this. And it's empty today. That's because the church is not a building. It doesn't matter where you are. In fact, there's going to be some great worship going on this weekend out over in, in the, uh, by the ocean and the beach there at Moonlight Ranch. Christians are going to be gathering all over, everywhere. And they're going to be praising God. Why? Because there's a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. Do you need joy today? Just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. You see, one of the, one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is joy. That's right. Righteousness, peace, and joy comes from the Lord. So I want to encourage you today. Go to Psalm 46. Read that psalm. Stick with that psalm. Meditate on that psalm. Memorize that psalm so that when you're surrounded by the cesspools of life, all the, the junk that's being poured out, you can raise your heart and mind and voice and praise God. Can I pray for you today? Lord, we're, we're living in troubled times. We know that. And they may get worse. It's very possible. And that's why we've got to get to our source. We've got to be reminded, like it says in Psalm 46, that you're our refuge, you're our fortress, you're our source, you're, our, you're the one that we can run to in troubled times. And I pray for everyone, those that may be listening to me today, that if they don't know Christ, that they will run to Him, they will embrace Him because He is truly a Savior. I pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. You know, if you're listening today and you've never come to know Christ, let me encourage you to do that. It, it, Christ came into my life over 50 years ago. I was a crazy, drug-taking hippie, lost in all that culture. And Christ came in. 
over 50 years ago radically changed my life in a moment's time and set me on a new path and he's kept me over 50 years and where you are today where whatever you're going through just reach out and 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 trust christ in fact let me encourage you just just pray this prayer with me it could be a, a new beginning for you pray this if you're ready if you're willing to give your life to god dear lord today i turn to you i trust you jesus to be my lord to be my savior I believe in you, that you have risen from the dead. Forgive me for my sins. Fill my life. Fill my heart. Be my Lord. I thank you, Lord, for that. Forgive me. Fill me. Thank you, Lord. And I ask these things, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Keep trusting the Lord. Hey everyone, we hope that that message touched you through the power of the Holy Spirit that could change your life. And what we encourage you to do is one of two things. Number one, if it did encourage you or you have a testimony that you wanna to share to encourage others, email us at info at trinitysandiego.org. It's a great way where we can get the gospel message out. And number two, you can partner with us. If you text 77977 with Trinity San Diego, all one word, you and you follow the prompts, what it will do is you can uh, create the momentum to really really get the gospel message, not only in our city, but in our state and in our country and in our world. You can broaden the reach through giving. Amen. And uh, another thing, the last thing that we want to draw your attention to is there are a few things coming up right. that are really crucial to be involved in and connected to, to really remain spiritually engaged yeah. during this time. We really want to stay connected with you, even though we have to be socially distant. Right. So we have a few announcements of some things that are coming up that we would love for you to put on your calendar and join us in on this coming week. Hey church, Pastor Todd here. I just have a couple quick announcements for you. Uh, if you would, would you take out your phone right now, your phone right here, and text Trinity San Diego, all one word, to 84576. Again, Trinity San Diego, all one word, to 84576. What you will do is that will give you an opportunity to get connected with us if you need prayer, if you wanna be on our email list to really stay connected. You can also follow us on social media. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. It's a great way where you can stay connected into everything that is happening here in the life of Trinity San Diego. Also, one other thing, we are in the midst of doing our parking lot services. Every Sunday for the foreseeable future at 10 a.m., right in our parking lot here at Trinity San Diego on Sunday mornings, we will be having a parking lot gathering. We will be social distancing where there will be an X on the parking spot that you can park in. We will have activities for the kiddos. We will have a great time of connection with being socially distant. And But what we will do is we will praise the name of our Lord Jesus. We will sing loud, we will shout, and we will have an encouraging, hope-filled word. So I encourage you, if you feel comfortable and you're able to, join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. right here at Trinity San Diego. God bless.